What follows is an important and meaningful conversation with Adaptive Golf's foremost ambassador out of Atlanta, Georgia, Marcus Williams. You will take quick notice that Adaptive is a very apt description of Marcus, his mindset, and his general attitudes towards life. Here goes. Marcus, how you yes, doing? Sir. I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm good, man. Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on. Yep. What got you into playing adaptive golf? 2017, I got invited to the course by the guy who invents this court, this car. He invited me out, came out, and I was hitting the ball strong, hitting a lot of trees. I came to Atlanta on a three-day trip to see my mom here. 2018, Thanksgiving. That three-day trip turned into five weeks of me exploring Georgia. But it was just a Christmas to the air. And me just not knowing anybody here, I moved here. Six months later, I got invited to the same course um, by Georgia State Golf Association. They invited me out to one of their adaptive golf clinics. Never been on a golf course in my life, like, and I uh, fell in love with it. You know, just getting the club in my hand, putting some putting some swings in on the ball. Six months later, got invited out to uh, South Carolina to a long drive contest. I just carry one driver. That's all I had was a driver at the time. At that time, you only had one driver? Had one driver, bro. And I was just practicing on YouTube, just trying to just, you know, just get the ball to get up in the air. Most of my balls, you know, were hit very hard, but they were going everywhere. And I ended up winning that competition by hitting the grid to the right. So like, my slice or my fade that I hit now, naturally, won. And so I won the competition with a 225 yard drive. Started competing in long drive, world long drive, went to Thackerville. Mesquite, Nevada, and just went on the journey. It's still like that very first day that I was invited out to play adaptive golf. Today is that same day. I'm just a kid in the playground. You know, so I got uh, introduced to golf. You said you had a hole in one yeah. a month ago and you had just gotten back from Canada. Yeah, so I had a hole in one uh, about a month ago. Just here at Bobby Jones. Uh, I've uh, played this part three about, about 30 times, you know, our ball always goes in the water for, for the most part. Um, that day was just a magical day. You know how I put a good swing on the ball and hit the ball over the over the water. Landed one time on the green and popped straight in the hole and I went crazy. I went berserk just like everybody else. <laughs> so yeah. That's been a talk of the town now that I hit a hole in one and so yeah. you know, just stuff like that, you know, golf golf rewards you with stuff, you know, when you be consistent with it. Trying to learn it, so yeah, yeah, we're about to try to get one here now. You got hurt in what year? 2012. You have a really upbeat disposition, and when I leave hanging out with you, I always feel it. What are some tools you use? I occupy, I occupy myself with things to distract me from my pain. You know, most people don't know I'm in pain all day. You know, it's nerve pain, like it's so cold out here right now, it even intensifies it. But yeah, you know, for me to be able to get up and stand up, get some weight on my legs. I know that that's the pain that I have to go through in order to get the game, you know, so uh -huh. that's the reward. I occupy with things that I like to do, like I know I love playing golf. To get up and get out here in these elements, I know on my side of town it's a little bit cooler. For some reason, when I get over here, I don't know if it's because I'm on a golf course or not, it just feels warmer. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a plant, I'm a tree, I'm a human being, I'm an organism. I'm not a, a stagnant clone person where I just you know, go with narratives because everybody else is mad or because yeah. everybody has, has a headache today. Yeah. Um, or because everybody's pissed off about politics. I don't care about none of that stuff. So it doesn't move me. So I like to leave people in a, in a, in a situation or a condition better than what I found them. Not to say that they're doing bad, but at least people, they think I'm, I'm wealthy because of what I, what I give. And so it's not wealthy of money. They just they appreciate kind of what I give, you know? So, I say that good relationships, you know, build trust with people and trust, uh, it brings you in contact uh, with people and things that money can't buy when you operate that way. And so I just control what I can and I can't control me not being able to stand up and walk. I can't control me not being able to hit a straight ball every time. And so everything in my life just kind of rose that way. Who gives a shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so you just keep, you know, I don't, I don't have a, a like a, a blueprint for it. I'm just as frustrated on the inside as a lot of people, you know, and that's why I moved to Georgia because I was, I was homeless. I was living in my car and nobody knew. And then when I would tell people, you know, they kind of didn't believe me. Not that so much they didn't believe me, they didn't really know how to, how to, how to receive it or check back in. 
And so I yeah. went through a period of time, you know, to where God delivered me from it, gave me golf. You never played before adaptive golf. Man, I, the only thing I know about golf was Tiger Woods. I think that's pretty much it. I didn't know anybody. And um, when I thought about it, I thought it was a rich sport, white man's game. It's not completely um, untrue. Trust builds good relationships. I mean, we're on this course by ourselves right now. And, you know, it's just from generosity. People know that I play not for trophies. I play for my well-being. I have a sickness in my body. It's not from not being able to walk, you know, and this helps me to decompress and deal with it. Somebody, somebody understands, you know, sometime and sometime they don't, but today they do. And I'm happy to be out here, so yeah. yeah. This is therapeutic, like even this conversation for me because, you know, I live by myself, I'm not, I'm not dating. I haven't dated in years. You'll know when I'm dating, because she'll be right out here with me on the course. Yeah. This is the hole I hit the hole in one on. I don't think he tried to hit a hole in one. I think it just happens. I didn't even know what a hole in one was, so I hit one, really. I'm gonna put a good swing on it and let's see what happens. You get another one, maybe. Let's see. I'm gonna back up a little bit just for that. crazy if I hit one. I'll probably stop it now. It's gonna take a long time to get this done. Yeah. So people ask me, they say, so what's the hardest part of golf? You know, everybody thinks golf is hard. The hardest part for golf is strapping up in this damn chair. Yeah. If I can find someone in America that can make me a strap, knee strap and chest strap that's just so much easier to take on and take off the pace of play will be it would just speed up the pace of play it would be awesome so I'm going to hit a hybrid 5 of course I'm always shouting out these guys Prime Exio I hope those guys sponsor me one day because I can't hit any other club it's not Exio Be on the green, but it's gonna be left. Oh, not even on the green. Wow, okay. On a summer day, that's on the green. Marcus, what's something that you believe now that maybe in 2010, 2011 you said that's crazy? Moving out of Oakland, moving out the Bay Area. Yeah, I've been there all my life, bro. And, um, we're pretty proud, you know, about where we're from. The town, yeah, I'll the say. Town. I mean, people thought I was crazy. They, thought, they still think I'm coming back. Yeah, this is it, you know. It, it was fearful as hell live, moving here, though. Did but you I, just get in your car and drive? I was staying with my dad for five weeks on that trip I told you about earlier. Flew back home January 5th um, after being out here for five weeks. Just didn't sign my lease. Packed all my stuff in my car. Gave, her, gave the rest of my furniture away. That was the most fearful thing I ever did in my whole life. That was more fearful than the rehab. I was in rehab for 144 days. I was broken up. You know, every part of my body was, you know, was 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 pretty much impacted by that injury. As soon as I made a decision, breakthrough. Like literally, I had a I had a stress pain in my stomach from what I, what I was dealing with back home. You know, a year prior, the moment I stepped foot back back here, I was sitting by trains, go to the train track and just sit by a train because you know it's a lot of trains and like brown buildings out here. I guess we'll go sit by trains and just sit there all day. I would read and it's like, it wouldn't bother me. I love the vibration. You know, it was just like, I was crazy out here. Just love to do country stuff. I felt like that was being country. <laughs> Watching trains? <laughs> Watching trains and, and eating eating chicken wings. You know, right. For the most part, yeah. No. Even people that live here don't realize that. Yeah. The land's a wing town. Yeah. And I love it. Trying to, trying to lay off the meat, but yeah, wings are good. Yeah. Are you, so you try to lay off? Yeah, yeah. 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 If I can do 90% veggies and if I could juice 90% of my day, I would. It's just better for my body, um, digest food. Mm -hmm. Eating green is the best thing you can do, being debilitated. You know, just everything's manual, so use your imagination, you know, for the most part. Ah. Yeah. Do it like everything works out on this right time. You're going to have the right golf shot. You're going to hit the hole in one at the right time. Everything's going to happen at the right time, so you can't really rush it. Um, Let's expand on that. There's a saying, and I kind of believe it's true, in the Bay Area, the way the lights are calibrated, the street lights. Yeah. If you go to speed limit, 
won't catch a you won't catch a red. Here in the inner cities of Georgia, we haven't gotten there yet. You can sit at the light for about six minutes. That's how life is, bro. Like if you don't press the issue, you don't chase. If you don't chase life, you can live it. I've been known to press. If you don't press. Everything opened up. I've never, I don't knock on doors. I don't write letters. I'm not saying I shouldn't. When people get up, my, my business people, you know, they get mad at me about it, but I just don't think that it works that way. That's widely known and rarely practiced. You want to play? Yeah. All right, folks. Come on. All right. I was talking to my dad the other day. We had a really good conversation, which we've come a long ways to be able to have this conversation. I've been a great dad all the way through, but you know, we're just so much alike. He told me that his mind, that my mind is a lot stronger than his, you know, cause I try to encourage him to, to keep moving, keep going, you know. Um, I told him, I said, what caused me to be headstrong is that I have to do, like even with this, it's next, it's next, action everything is next action if i don't put this on i'm not going to be able to play golf if i don't if i don't do the next action it won't happen and that's just so that levels the playing field with me and anybody you know so walking isn't my walking isn't the challenge for me that's what you guys see you guys want me to walk i'm walking <laughs> we just left that hole to get to this hole did you walk to get here? I did not. You drove. Oh, it's from, however you get from point A to point B is what I'm saying. Yeah. And what caused me to be able to, to, to not just think like this, but to develop enough, that's a spasm, to develop enough resolve to continue to keep fighting to, to perform that next action was I had, I had pressure on me all the time. Like even this, I have, this is just pressure. This hurts. It's a spasm. It's a spasm. It's like it starts here. It's cut my breath off. And so sometimes I, people say I talk a little bit, not loud, but I feel like I'm constrained. I'm screaming through a diaphragm that has been compromised constantly because my because of my spasms, especially with this thing on here tight like this too. But what else am I do? Say shit. I'm gonna stay at home and play Fortnite. Right. <laughs> you know, just, that's just not, that ain't me. Can beat you in this hole. I hope not. Now good. we're talking on a 13 Pro is much better. <laughs> Look at that. So what's what's a like a dumb question you get asked sometimes about playing adaptive golf? What's your handicap? What's your handicap? <laughs> I tell them I say I don't have one. Right? <laughs> But of course, it's, it's not a dumb question. It's a very good question. Yeah. It's a golf question, but I, that's the one I play with the one. Um, um, not a dumb question because they actually say, are you able to go in bunkers? Yeah. You know, I try to stay out of them. You know, meaning I try not to hit the ball just like every other golfer out of the bunker. But that, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm opening up a whole new conversation around golf. Mm. I feel like growing the game for me is making golf inclusive. So it'll be me, it'll be me, me, Tiger Woods, a veteran, that's amp an amputee, and a child. That's inclusive golf to me. You know, it's not really a dumb question. It's just kind of lets me know that people are thinking like I'm thinking. You know, so I like what Europe is doing right now with their tour players. Their tour players are getting involved with adaptive golf, and not like they're playing it, but they're supporting it. So I would like to see that same same thing here, you know, with the PGA or live or live. We may have to edit that out. I don't know. I like live. I like what they're doing. That's pure, man. Fly. You build your upper body pretty well, and your mobility is good. What what kind of stuff do you do to keep that up? Um, tell anybody if you want to get in shape, buy yourself a wheelchair. 
push a wheelchair along enough, you, 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 it just it just translates. But just stay active, man. And this is the biggest muscle that we have to exercise here. What do you do for that? Um, yeah, I'm getting cold, but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I do for that, man, is like I said, is showing up in the face of adversity, um, being fearless, being more relentless than whatever um, the condition is in my body. Um, some of it is grit. Some of it is just pure. I'm not going to quit. A lot of it is faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. You know, I don't put my faith in front of people. You know, I, I like people to feel what it is and for them to inquire. But yeah, I'm, I, I have my own meditation, my own practices, you know, my own prayer, you know, that I go into. Um, I cry, laugh, sing, get frustrated all in one day. I don't let it build up, you know, because that tore me apart one day. You know, just by letting it build up for years and trying to be strong. When I'm weak, I'm strong. It is, man. Yeah. yeah, I was one of those guys in my 20s and 30s who kind of maintained a pretty stiff upper lip and took a lot of pride in it, of course. Yeah. And then somebody close to me died. And ever since then, I had a similar disposition as what you just described. When I'm weak, I'm strong. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Was there an, an event that catalyzed that release for you? Or was it just you decided you were going to let well, things I, run through I, I you? I always kind of like just shouldered it but when it be right before i moved out here like this trip relieved me because it showed me something different i didn't have my phone wasn't ringing a lot with all my friends you know i didn't have a lot of different places i was being pulled to not they were not that it was bad places but just that shoot i couldn't afford to get there or as a constraint or i was still learning how to live with a with a spinal cord injury and, and not piss on, pee on myself at a, at a potluck you can you say know, piss me, you know whatever <laughs> yeah. but you know, so I was just trying to learn how to live this life. And so when I came out here and have all those burdens that was on me, I developed a muscle as far as to just, um, my term is to do what you can. And so once I started doing what I could, I never started feeling sorry for what I couldn't. And what I couldn't no longer um, became an issue because there was nothing that I couldn't do because it opened up a world of possibilities at that point because what's for me is what's for me. And so what's possible for me is what I do, I like <laughs> you know? and you don't, you, you, you just don't get bit out of shape. What's not for you? It, you feel the emotion of it, and you have to process it. But if you keep your mouth shut and you let God fight your battles, not like He's punishing anybody, but He's just, He'll just, you know, like we both want to go to McDonald's with a 75 is closed. My 75 is closed. Mm -hmm. I can take another route to get to get to McDonald's. So, because I can't walk, I can still get there. I tell somebody, I'll tell you, I say, meet me in Canada in the morning. I bet you I'll be there. And so, when people say, you're just, you're a disabled man, like the, all these taglines, I don't want to say something about that. Taglines for me should be taken away. What's a wounded warrior? So, like, stop calling the veterans wounded warriors. They're not wounded warriors. It's like you're telling them that they, that they used to be killers, that they, that they used to be strong, they used to be patriotic. When I talk to veterans, they, they like me because. I talk to them from a human being standpoint. And if we do, if, if we get back to humanity, this thing won't be as um, challenging as it is. What's challenging is, is all the classifications, all the um, things that we put on each other, you know, to try to live up to. And all of us are practicing. So cut the shit, cut the crap. Yeah. This is how I see it. I like it. Even the birds, they say they, my geeks, they understand, they get it. <laughs>